Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Rowell. All right, it's a nice warm day today. It's supposed to get almost to 80 degrees, which is really weird for January. And I decided I wanted to do a little something to prepare the yard for next spring when we try and replant. As you know, we had a freak spell of cold weather blow through here and it pummeled my yard. And a few days ago, I went and finally kind of cleaned up some of the leaf waste in the yard and replanted a lot of those leaves into several of the garden beds with the, host, with the hopes that that will decompose and turn into fertile soil that we can use. But I'm gonna do a little something more to help that. One of the things that happens, that needs to happen in order to get that soil to decompose properly is it needs to be kept moist. And right now, with it being as warm as it is, uh, it's not going to do that very well because it's going to be dry on the top and and it's not going to decompose very well. So what I'm going to do today is go over to Home Depot, get a bunch of uh, garden soil, and we're going to cover up all those leaves that I put on the put on the gardens uh, a week or so ago, and then we'll water it really well, and that'll get everything nice and moist in there, and it'll become begin decomposing really quickly. I also got a little bit else uh, that I want to do, and we'll talk about that later. This is that little corner section where I had my philodendrons and they were completely destroyed. I'm actually sort of hoping that they may bounce back. Uh, the stuff above ground, you know, froze solid and that was the end of that. But I'm hoping what's underground, the root structure is still alive and will hopefully bounce back at some point. But I want to start by putting some dirt in here and also in here over here where the garden is. Because uh, you recall I filled that up with leaves too. And so I'm figuring I probably need to get about 20 bags of soil. And so I'm going to run over to Home Depot and pick those up. Now fortunately, uh, if, I, if I'd done this before, it would have taken four or five trips to get that much soil home from Home Depot. But I've got the trailer. So we're going to hook up the trailer and we're going to run over to Home Depot and get a whole bunch of dirt. Now I used to haul trailers around all the time when I worked at Disneyland because we had assets that had to be moved to different parts of the park and I got to the point where I was really proficient at backing them up. Uh, which can be a little bit difficult with a trailer because trailers don't always behave the way you expect when you back up. Uh, but I got to the point I'd done it enough that I could thread a needle with a trailer. But I can't do that to save my life here with a car. Uh, one of the things that makes a big difference is the type of vehicle you're using to to uh, haul your trailer. And the closer the wheels are to each other, front to back, the easier it is to quick to make quick adjustments and get the trailer to do what you want. Uh, but there is way too much difference in the, too much distance between the front and rear wheels on the car for me to have any luck whatsoever, even backing this trailer into my yard. So what I end up having to do is actually pull the trailer in forwards, unload stuff uh, as I need to, and then I can disconnect the trailer physically from the car and manually by hand move it. Fortunately, it's light enough to do that. But, you know, I cannot for the life of me get that to work uh, well. So it's just one of those little things you gotta get used to with trailers. Yeah, that would have taken at least four trips in the car. But got it home in one trip. It was real, real convenient. They just, uh, I just brought one of them up to the cashier, said, I want to get 20 of them. Is it possible I can get someone to forklift them out for me? And they just hauled them out on a pallet, threw them onto the back of the trailer, and off I went. So this was even easier than I was expecting. Now, I knew when I put this garden in the first year that I was going to have issues with the soil settling over the years and I knew I'd have to augment things probably for a few years at least until we got everything settled. And that's going to happen here too as this leaf waste decomposes uh, it will settle also. So I'm actually going to put probably four bags of soil into each one of these beds and it's probably going to stick up a good six inches above the top but like I said as it settles that should settle down at, and at this point we should get to the point where it's not going to be uh, that much settling anymore because eventually the soil gets compacted enough that it doesn't become an issue but as this stuff decomposes it's going to become very very healthy mulch and this will help uh, make the garden healthy uh, next year. All right, so I was figuring I'd probably get about four bags in each of these, and that's about what it turned out to be. So we've added about eight cubic feet to each of the beds. 
Uh, now when I water this, uh, this will allow the, uh, the moisture to seep in. We'll get the leaf waste underneath nice and moist and that'll uh, promote it decomposing along with uh, the little bit of sun we're going to get this winter. And hopefully by the time we get to spring and we're ready to start planting, we're going to have some very fertile soil here. So uh, next thing I got to do is get the soil in over there and that's going to take a little bit more time. All right, so I got another 24 cubic feet or 12 bags of soil in this little spot here. And I think this is looking a lot better. Um, hopefully now, uh, like I said, we're going to water this really well and uh, get that uh, leaf waste underneath there to begin decomposing and turning into the nutrients we need to do. One of the things I've had a problem with ever since I put this bird bath in here is it staying level. Uh, apparently the soil tends to seep a little bit and it kind of tends to to uh, lean over over time. Uh, so, so I've leveled this thing up again. I don't know, it'll probably continue to to uh, tip, but hopefully one of these days we're gonna get it to the point where it stays level and uh, doesn't lean anymore. I do have like a piece of uh, flagstone underneath that. I'm doing my best to get that thing level. Uh, and it's pretty level right now, but like I said, we're gonna see what happens. Now, I still have hopes that the philodendrons that were in here are gonna come back. There was one here, there was one here, there was one over here. And like I said, they kind of got pummeled by the uh, weather uh, a few weeks ago. So hopefully they'll come back. If not, we'll try something else and uh, go from there. Now I got one more thing I wanna do, and that's over here. You may remember last spring in this little section over here, I uh, planted a whole bunch of Lantania plants and well, they got pummeled too. As you can see, they're not doing too well. Now I have pretty high hopes that these are gonna come back because in reality, this one right here uh, was planted by the people who owned the house before me and it got destroyed when we laid the patio over here a uh, year and a half ago and it still managed to come back and that one has been through worse storms and worse cold than we had a few weeks ago so hopefully this will all come back uh, this spring but I want to cut off all this dead stuff on the top so that uh, when it does start coming back we'll just have uh, new green shoots coming up uh, this thing these things are pretty rugged they uh, they, didn't, they aren't very happy right now, but I suspect that uh, they will come back as well. But like I said, I wanna cut all this off and get that out of here so it looks neat in here. And so when stuff is ready to come back, hopefully it will. Okay, so we got the yard pretty much ready now for the winter. This thing will uh, settle a little bit. The garden over here is ready to go. And I've also cleaned up this area over here. We pulled all the dead branches of the Lantania out. Now, like I said, I'm hoping that's gonna bounce back. Yeah, but if it doesn't, you know, we'll see what happens and we'll uh, try something else. That's what, that's always sort of been my philosophy with uh, plants is you find out what works and if it works, you stick with that. And if it doesn't, you try something else. So, like I said, I have high hopes that the Lantania will come back. Uh, not so sure about the philodendrons, but we'll give them their shot right now. They should still stay, if they are still alive, they should stay well insulated underground because there's probably about four inches of soil and leaf waste on top of them. So I think we're done for today. Uh, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.